Hey, this is Chris from Essential SQL, and a lot of you have been asking questions about my course, Fearless SQL, so I thought I would go through and do just a really quick tour for you to show you some of the cool features. So I'm just going to run through real quick. This isn't scripted, so I'm just going to fly through. Maybe there's some hitches, but hopefully you'll see some of the content of the course and it'll give you a feel for if this is something that you want. So let me start out with the main page here and the modules. I'm going to run through these and then we'll dig into one of the modules and you can get a feel for how I actually set up one of the lessons and uh, you can see all the, the care I actually put into it. All right, so the first thing I want to point out is, is that with Fearless SQL, what I'm really focusing on is not the easy stuff that you can learn right off the bat, like by you know reading something on the web, but it's that stuff that gets a little harder after that. So I'm going to start jumping into like set operators and joins and subqueries, common table expressions, move on into other modules for window expressions and grouping and pivoting data. So I'm going to already assume that you've already learned how to select columns from a table and perhaps even group things from a table and we are going to just jump in from there and learn how to combine the data together okay so let's go look at a sample lesson here and i'm just going to pick one and hopefully um, we get some good stuff so let's look at a module here and we'll pick a lesson so i'm, I'm into the subquery module right now and one thing I want to point out is I just don't have a lesson on subqueries and then say, hey, here's a subquery and it's a query within another query and it can be everywhere and boom, here you go, you're done. No, I go through and I'll show you how the subquery works everywhere it can be used. So we're going to talk about subqueries and how they can be used in the column list. Can you have a you know query in um, where clause? Where what's where is a query um, use versus inner join? What's what's correlated subquery? Um, people get confused when queries return more than one record, so it can cause errors in the solution for your um, SQL. So we need to understand, you know, is a query you know returning a table or a single or what we call scalar value. We talk about the different operators like any and all and what operator would you use in certain situations. And then we talk about queries in the from clause, which are also called der derived tables. And then we move on to some of the other parts where we talk about use cases for derived tables because derived tables are really awesome to use. They're a great way to work around limitations in SQL. And then I wrap it up with subqueries and having. So this one module like seems like it could be a short module, literally has what 12 lessons in it. So let's go in and check out one of the lessons. So I'm going to show you correlated subqueries. All right. So the idea here is with my lessons is that I have them set up where they're based on a video and the video is structured to be in two parts. The first part is what I'll call a lecture. And I'm going to talk about the mechanics of a sub correlated subquery. And first of all, I'm going to explain what the heck a correlated subquery is and then how does it work. And then the second part is I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to go through using um, SQL's uh, Management Studio. I'm going to write a query. You're going to watch me make mistakes, me fix the mistakes. I'm going to go through and, and write some queries and you're going to see the results from VentureWorks database. And then the last part then, of course, is that you can take challenge questions. So let me dig into one of these real quickly here and I'll show you how this all works. Now, I'm not going to Welcome play the lesson, the lesson because if I play the lesson, as you can see, it's going to talk all over. But I will expand it out here and then I'm going to just kind of slide through the bottom real quick and you can see that what I'm really talking about here now is going through like a lecture part where I would explain what the correlated subquery is, how it works. We get you know a couple minutes in so here we're like four minutes into the lesson. I'm going to go through you know the mechanics of this correlated subquery. You get further into the um, lesson and then we go into a demo. Okay, so I'll talk about 
at the end here, wrap some things up, talk about use cases for sort correlated subqueries, then we'll go into the demo. And here you're gonna see where, you know, the demo is gonna be the bulk of the, the lesson. And you're gonna see where I'm going to take some queries from the VentureWorks database and then just start working through them, as you can see on the screen. And then I'm gonna show you how uh, different pieces work. I'm gonna show you, do like maybe do a compare and contrast on here's like an old school way of doing a query versus here's how you can do a correlated subquery. Show you the example, uh, maybe pull out pieces of a, a subquery. Just run that as um, as a bit so you can see what the, what the uh, result would be and then show you how that results incorporated in the larger um, query. And then we work through, as you can see, we work with table relationships so you get a good knack and feel for how things are joined together as we do this. This is also built upon the fact that you've already worked with joins in my prior module. I don't assume that you've already know all this. I, you know, we teach it and I teach it in a sequence. So my, my lectures are really ordered really nicely. And I'm going to um, go through and if I talk about uh, you know, some kind of join technology here. It's going to be something that I taught you already. So when we're working with correlated subqueries, it's not going to be a totally new concept that's just thrown out of left field at you. And then I just work through more and more of the demo and we talk and talk about it. And here we are with one of my longer lessons and we're, we're you know, 30 minutes into it. And at this point now, you should have a really good feel for how a correlated subquery works. Okay, so at this point you could go in and then look at some questions that you could then further reinforce how to use correlated subqueries. So let's go look at like a challenge question because I have these set up um, throughout the lesson. Like basically at the end of each lesson, there's a challenge question. Let me see if I can zoom this in so we can read it a little better. So here's the uh, one on correlated subqueries. There's a question that HR manager wants you to show query from um, the last um, the query the result from the, what the last summer intern wrote. Unfortunately, the intern's no longer at the company and they want to know uh, results uh, that contain every employee regards to the current flags value. And here's the sample output. So what you're really looking to do here is we're gonna kind of work backwards, right? which is kind of cool. So we're going to take like this output. Now we need to figure out how can I recreate this? And I give you the um, relationships and then how would you write the query? And then we build upon that. And there's a, you know, an example with a warehouse manager and, and so on. Now the cool thing is, is that you can type in your, your select statement here and run it. And I also have the answer. So if you're into correlated subqueries, you could just take this answer here. You know, you could have wrote this yourself. I don't have time right now. We're going through this real quickly, but let me just paste this in just to show you how this runs. I'm gonna hide the answer. And when I run this, let me just show you that this will go through and run on the database. Because what's cool about this then is you can see the results of your work right here. You don't necessarily have to have SQL installed on your machine. I think that is a key thing. You don't need to have SQL installed. Now, really what I could have done here is just to show you again just how um, flexible this is, is. Let's just select the average vacation hours from human resources employee. And let me show you how this works. Uh, I know I got I got to put... Um, average hours on this. I gotta give it an alias here for my screen. And it comes back with average hours of 50. So here again, now we have a, a way to even work on the challenge questions without you even having to have SQL on your machine. So this is good for those that may have a, a, a laptop and maybe it's a little older or it's a Mac and you wanna use SQL Server, what have you you can do this. I also have um, instructions on how you can load your own learning lab onto your own computer or into the cloud. So I have you covered there. So this is the real quick tour of this challenge question and 
how I would do a lesson. So let me go back one step here again and just somewhat wrap up that what I just showed you was one lesson out of many for the subqueries. And again, stepping back even further is that this one lesson is just part of my entire course on how you can become proficient at learning what I call intermediate and advanced SQL. All right. And it, I lay it out very simply so that this is something that's, you know, visual and it's easy for you to learn. So now's a great opportunity for you to get into this course because I do have it with a coupon. So I would highly encourage you to check it out. And I hope to see you enrolled in the class. So have a good holiday. Take care. Bye.